Welcome to EPG Patshala. This is the lesson on social accountability and social audit, ensuring people's participation and holding government accountable, which is part of the course on community organization for the subject social work education. I'm Molly Shree Vyas, professor in the Center for Community Organization and Development Practice in the School of Social Work at Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. Um, in this uh, lesson, we'll talk about social accountability, uh, what actually social accountability is, and some of the tools of social accountability, and why they are important for community organization. Uh, social accountability is a political exercise, as inclusion of the weakest and the poorest is a crucial element along with invigorating the supply side through incentives and sanctions. And at the heart of the tools of social accountability are mobilized communities, informed citizens, democratic, confrontational means of engagement with the powerful state apparatus, and the need for the public to be part of their own development agenda as active partners rather than as passive beneficiaries. So basically, the community and the active community is really at the heart of the idea of social accountability. And uh, social audit is a tool for social accountability, for facilitating social accountability. And uh, uh, it is social because it is, um, it is in the hands of the community. And the community has a very key role to play in uh, undertaking uh, social accountability and ensuring social um, in undertaking the social audit and ensuring social accountability. Social accountability and social audit are uh, commonly used, discussed, uh, commonly talked about as agenda, as goals in the present day context in countries such as India. And uh, there have been very concrete initiatives by uh, government to actually facilitate social accountability and social audit. Uh, we'll talk about this in relation to community organization in this lesson. So I'll also highlight, uh, so we'll start with social accountability and its form and talk about some measures of social accountability and then uh, 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 discuss briefly social audit in India. Social accountability is a dialogic process between citizens and any power holding institutions aimed at building participatory democracy, addressing social exclusion, and ensuring effective delivery of services. It refers to a broad range of actions and mechanisms beyond voting that citizens can use to hold the state to account for the delivery of social programs. Okay. Now, why are we talking about social accountability in connection with community organization is something that I would like to explain briefly. That uh, community organization has the goals of social justice, has the goal of you know, um, better uh, lives, better quality of life, better, uh, better access to entitlements, rights, services by citizens, by people and a clear alignment with marginalized sections of the society and of various and a clear alignment with therefore various communities now social accountability as a concept therefore um, helps to bridge the gap between uh, authorities between the state which is supposed to work for the welfare of the citizens and between the citizens and communities themselves and um, uh, in doing so and through the mechanisms that and the tools that it employs it allows for people to gain in greater control of the development processes and hence if community organization is about community uh, welfare community empowerment community access to uh, entitlements and services and so on then social accountability is one of the ways in which this access can be facilitated and the goals of community uh, organization can be achieved. So um, it is because of this uh, uh, link between uh, the goals of community organization 
uh, and the idea of social accountability that we are talking uh, about social accountability and social audit in this lesson. Although we'll only be introducing it, we'll have the details in the e-text and in the readings that are given to you at the end of the e-text. But uh, what I'm aiming to do here is to talk briefly about social accountability and social audit here. So let's look at types of accountability. You can have accountability efforts uh, through formal institutions and institutional checks and balances to curb misuse of power within structures of the state. So within the exec executive, legislator, uh, legislature, judiciary. Uh, so uh, these accountability efforts are understood as horizontal accountability. And you have ver vertical accountability originates from the state apparatus and uh, processes of horizontal accountability are inbuilt within the government and structures of the state. This is a UNDP understanding of types of accountability. So, uh, so if you have understood uh, essentially that social accountability is uh, about uh, holding the state answerable for, uh, for its uh, uh, welfare measures, for the work that it is doing, holding the state answerable and accountable to the citizens and uh, developing and utilizing tools and mechanisms through which this can be done. That is at the uh, core of social accountability. Then let's look at what some of the tools of social accountability are. And you will find that the tools that I'm going to briefly discuss now are actually connected to development programs that are being implemented in the country. Uh, wall painting is one of the uh, tools of accountability. Uh, wall paintings are essentially, uh, uh, you know, information and implementation details of the programs which are provided to citizens through literally writing on the walls. And these, uh, this is the closest and simplest means of accountability. And it, the, the writing and the location of where the wall paintings actually are placed is close to where citizens reside in the village or the town uh, and in a language that is easily accessible and comprehensible to them. So details of the program and its implementation or the status or an update of its implementation would be written out uh, such that people can read it rather than uh, you know going to have to ask for particular details through officials or from officials who would be hesitant or unwilling to give it to them. So this is actually writing on the wall. Uh, wall paintings are used in many schemes and flagship programs in India, including Swachh Bharat Mission, uh, MG Narega, the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, government schools and others. And so MG Narega is a good example of where wall painting is used across the country as a means of, uh, uh, you know, updating and giving citizens information about the program and its implementation. The second tool is a citizen's charter. It's a document which systematically provides information to the citizens on the standard and quality of services and on grievance redressal mechanisms in case the services are not provided on time. So a citizen's charter aims to improve the quality of services by publishing standards which users can expect for each service they receive from the government. Uh, it's a tool for ensuring that delivery of services to citizens takes place with particular standards uh, of a particular quality and within a certain time frame. So for each service that is provided, you know, how long would it take? Within how many days should, would you get a birth certificate from your, you know, local ward office? So within how many days can you expect to get uh, you know, within, uh, within what time would you expect to receive uh, your caste certificate that you may have applied for. So the time frame for all of these is also specified in order to facilitate uh, the access to these uh, documents. The MIS is the management information systems, a system that ensures that all records and information avail available to the government agency implementing the, the scheme or the program is accessible to the public through a web portal. And you find, for example, that uh, MG Narega MIS is one of the biggest online repositories of information and resources and is available and accessible to the public. So in each state, 
the data would be up on the language of the state you know so you, you can people can access it people can read it and people can get all details that they require from the online portal and this is a public uh, uh, access to that MIS uh, of course in a country like India you would talk about you would need to con you know look at the fact that uh, they're not uh, a large section of the population does not have access to the internet. Uh, a large section of the population is also uh, not literate, not computer literate. And therefore, you may need organizations and local community organizers to actually facilitate access to MIS and to interpret it and then to, to help people with acting on the information that they have received. Participatory budgeting is a process that enables the public to participate directly in different phases of formulating of budgets, of decision making and monitoring of the execution of the budget. So budgeting processes and exercise are also those that lend themselves to people's involvement and greater ownership and can work effectively as a tool for facilitating social accountability. Grievance redressal uh, mechanisms aim to ensure that maximum levels of accountability and transparency are brought into the implementation of public programs. So it's, uh, uh, you know, when things don't work in their interest, communities should know who they can go to. They should know that if they do not get redress at a, uh, the first level, who they should go to next for uh, with their complaint and their grievance. So this information, um, so, so there are two levels at which we are talking about this uh, grievance redressal mechanism. One is that people should have information that the mechanism exists and how it will work. And the sef second is, you know, that mechanism should work in their interest. So there are, both of these are extremely critical in uh, ensuring, you know, greater accountability to the people. So it's important to, uh, it's important to institutionalize uh, these mechanisms. Uh, they should be time bound. So um, participatory and decentralized mechanisms which empower the citizens to register grievances faced by them in accessing their benefits or entitlements and receive time bound redressal of the same. So the gender budgeting helps in analyzing and monitoring the expenditure and allocations of the budget from a gender lens to so actually look at how it works for men, women and uh, other genders. And uh, the attempt is therefore to uh, have a gender-based assessment of budgets and to provide feedback to the government if the needs of various groups are not met or they are met adequately. So. Um, these are lens with which budgets can be analyzed and uh, uh, the findings can be uh, you know, given to the policy makers to take note of and to act upon. Uh, one of the key tools of social accountability and one that is very common now, no, and one that is uh, more popular and increasingly being used in uh, contemporary times is that of social audit. And, uh, Social audit uh, has gained currency importance and in India it is also uh, now institutionalized across various states, particularly with regard to uh, MG Narega. What is social audit? It's a participatory process through which community members monitor the implementation of government programs and projects in their community. It's mostly an outcome of mobilized communities. Um, awareness of rights and entitlements and determination to be part of the development agenda by the citizens. So this tells you the character of social audit. I mean, it's, it's a tool in the hands of people, but it's, uh, it's systematic, it's organized, it, needs, it is methodical, and it needs to be uh, methodical to follow a certain system. And it basically um, represents people's keenness and interest to be part of their own development uh, process and to and it also uh, indicates the fact that people are becoming more and more aware of their rights and entitlements. Let's take a quick illustration about MG Narega, uh, more as an illustration here, uh, that um, 
uh, MG Narega has provided a legal framework for social audit of the scheme by government functionaries at state, district and block levels um, and through village level workers. Uh, the social audit uh, uh, for Manrega, that entire system and that uh, mechanism provides and specifies that the state government will also submit a summary of findings of social audits conducted during the financial year to the Comptroller and Auditor General of India, the CAG. Uh, this actually uh, gives a very serious sense of purpose to the entire exercise in various states because uh, you know you are formally writing out a report about the social audits and it's being communicated to an authority who is going to take note of what is happening with the program across different states. So each state is expected to give a report about uh, the social audits and the findings of the social audit to the CAG. Uh, now, as a system and in institutionalizing it, uh, for Narega, it is also mandated that there will be a social audit unit that's set up in each state, which will be responsible for conduct of the social audit in each gram panchayat twice a year across the state. So, social audit is an examination and assessment of the program or scheme conducted with the active involvement of people, and it's. Uh, about comparing official records with actual ground realities. That is what the audit is about. Um, it's a powerful tool for social transformation, community participation and government accountability. And uh, uh, section 17 of Manrega has actually mandated social audit of all the works executed under Manrega. So in India, you see that for uh, with regard to Manrega, there's a, a very a substantive initiative by the government to actually uh, to actually uh, institutionalize social audit and and bring in greater accountability to the people who are intended to benefit from the program but uh, uh, what uh, how to conduct the social audit is an aspect where people need to be trained and that is one of the key components of the entire exercise which the social audit units are expected to work on so social audit will focus on uh, performance of a program in fulfilling its intended objectives um, and ethical vision through consultation with a range of stakeholders including social program beneficiaries, the community members, the government officials and verifying the information obtained with the documents and physical evidence. You know the, the uh, key aspect of conducting the social audit is that uh, there is communication with people who have accessed the program or been left out of it. So it's through direct evidence uh, collection and verification that, uh, uh, that the entire results and outcome of the program is checked. And this is done by members of the community who are also trained to do this. And uh, uh, it is um, then put into a formal report which finds its way eventually to the CAG. So uh, that is at a reporting level, but at the ground level you find that you know the process through which a social audit happens, the public hearings that take place which are mandated to take place uh, uh, you know, through the Gram Sabha where the verification of all the findings also takes place and uh, uh, there is a, uh, the report of the social audit is finalized at the Gram Sabha that the public nature of this entire exercise lends for greater transparency and therefore greater accountability uh, as it actually unfolds. So typically in the way systems would work, there would be sections of people who would be left out of uh, you know, information who would not have an understanding or, or information about the program, the details of the program, who would maybe misinterpret it because of this lack of information. But uh, through public hearings and such fora, uh, you know, larger sections of the community can come into the fold of, of knowing about it, having information and also asking questions about what actually happened with the implementation of the program. And so it really uh, examines and assesses the social impact of specific programs and policies with a potential for wider participation and inclusion of various sections of the community. In India, a social audit was the outcome of grassroots struggles for having access to documents, 
related to wages and entitlements of the people but which were out of their reach. So in a sense uh, the entire system of social audit that has emerged in the country is an outcome of a process of community organization, community mobilization and organization. And uh, it, is, it is the lack of accountability, transparency, accessibility, complicated paperwork and delays that affect social welfare schemes and that have denied rights to the poor and pushed grassroots organizations in the country to demand the right to information. So uh, in uh, ensuring and working towards social accountability, there are, various, uh, there are various ideas and there are various systems and, uh, and laws that now uh, are utilized to, uh, to work towards this social accountability. Your right to information has a very key role to play in, uh, in gaining uh, you know, information about uh, the actual implementation of various programs and who has had access to uh, to certain services, what happened with, uh, with the departments, with the government departments or implementing agencies, all of these, many of these details and information can be sought through the RTI. So, um, so the processes of uh, implementation were plagued by various problems and uh, social accountability and social audit uh, address some of these in the way they actually uh, emerge. As a background to the emergence of social audit and the idea of social audit and uh, the entire system, um, one needs to understand the significance of the Right to Information Act 2005, uh, which emerged from a people's movement, uh, Mazdoor Kisan Shakti Sangathan, that is, and it established the need for complete, I mean, the struggle of MKSS led to the uh, Right to Information Act of 2005, uh, which has made access to public documents uh, possible for citizens. Uh, now, with the availability of public documents, uh, the workers and activists publicly scrutinized official records and highlighted the malfunctioning and ineffectiveness in the implementation of social programs during the public hearings and the Jan Sunvais. So there was a, there was a background to, uh, to this model of uh, social audit that uh, existed uh, through the work of, of these, of Sangathans and people's organizations such as this. They, they established a, a system for social audit and this, is, uh, this was picked up by uh, various states uh, in India that, uh, that systematized it, that institutionalized it, that located it within the government in order to engage methodically in social audit of, of government programs. So, through the in the in, in the in the way that social accountability no social account no in the way that social audit has emerged in the country uh, today we are at a juncture where there are some uh, key points that must be made about it one is that uh, it is being institutionalized across states for programs such as manrega and the intention is that capacities should be built uh, among uh, you know government functionaries and village people at all levels from state level till the village level such that they can undertake social audit of various government programs uh, other than Manrega as well. So the reach of social audit needs to also go and it is proposed to go beyond Manrega in, uh, in the uh, next few years. Um, the second uh, point here that must be mentioned is that uh, there is therefore uh, an agenda for large, uh, large level, large scale training and capacity building of all of these functionaries because uh, the method of social audit and the, and uh, the more importantly, the ethical consideration in social audit is something that uh, may not exist in and in functionaries everywhere and so there is an initiative by the by ministry by the government 
to actually uh, you know uh, uh, reach this to the functionaries that they are training so that uh, when social audit takes place it also takes place keeping the issues the dynamics of the community in mind and it takes place with a sensitivity to um, poverty caste gender inequalities all of these dynamics that actually uh, exist and operate in everyday life at at village level so uh, it's extremely important here that that uh, uh, in uh, in carrying out uh, and implementing a tool of social accountability such as social audit there are so many uh, newer tasks and uh, and components that actually unfold for uh, for government for educational institutions for civil society organizations and for uh, residents all of whom have a stake in the better implementation of these welfare programs uh, one of the questions about about uh, uh, you know social accountability and tools of social accountability could be that you know um, uh, training and social accountability uh, tools no one of the questions that may emerge uh, in such exercises is that you know uh, do uh, do such tools really bring about substantive and lasting change at the ground level i mean are they really successful in changing ground realities or are they still at the level of uh, you know dealing with uh, records and ensuring that corrective measures are taken but um, whatever uh, be that as it may that is a question but you find that uh, when uh, information about the implementation of programs is available to public when the details are verified in public and when corrective measures are taken uh, against you know those who have defaulted and uh, engaged in malpractice then it definitely sends out a message to uh, to everybody concerned that uh, uh, there is a way in which uh, development programs must reach people that they are intended for because uh, unless uh, there is effective use of the resources of public resources uh, we will really fail to achieve the objectives that we are aiming to achieve so in this module uh, i have uh, um, i have introduced the idea of social accountability and some of the tools of social accountability uh, the significance of social accountability for development programs and why we are talking about this in the context of community organization in particular i have uh, uh, discussed the tool of social audit for social accountability of course this is really a, a sketchy uh you know uh, presentation it only highlights all of these aspects you will find the details in the e text and the readings at the end of the e text e the readings at the end of the e text should really help you to get deeper into this particular topic thank you